well uh, my dear students today we are going to start the new topic on rolling of metals the previous lectures you have seen on forging different aspects of forging and as you know the forging has been the very uh, early process which developed by mankind the rolling is also a bulk metal forming process and uh, in this lecture we are going to uh, cover the topic like the the process of rolling the different types of rolling processes analysis slab method how do you analyze and you find out the power and the deformation uh, power etc we would also look into the different kinds of uh, forging defects that is very often observed and one has to to be very careful that there is no defect is found while the rolling takes place we would also subsequently see the different rolling mills as you know there are different types of rolling mills the the plate rolling mill the slab rolling mill ingot rolling mill billet rolling mills and there are uh, many others so we are going to speak on these issues all right so let us start with so uh, what is rolling in fact rolling is a bulk deformation process in which the thickness uh, of any work piece in fact is reduced by compressive forces by action of a compressive forces and that is exerted by two opposing that the rollers that moves in two rollers that moves in opposite directions the rolls rotate to pull the uh, the simultaneously and squeeze the work piece between them like if you see here in this figure the two rolls the top roll and the bottom rolls both are rotating and the direction of work flow is shown of the work piece so this rolling process uh especially this is called as a flat rolling right because you are using a flat plate and it is being rolled to reduce its height from the previous height to a reduced height so if you look at this whether you perform rolling by cold rolling hot rolling or warm rolling that's could be different processes and the what kind of alloy you are going to uh, uh, roll what is the production speed and uh, what kind of metallurgical properties you are expecting out of the roll product that is very important in fact the basic process which is uh, which has been shown earlier figure the two rolls and all that that's a flat rolling the very basic process and uh, this process is used to reduce the thickness of a rectangular cross section a closely related process is also called as shape rolling if you look at here these figures in which a square cross section is formed into a shape 
such as uh, an uh, I beam right. So, you can look the shape rolling you have a square cross section you are going to produce I beam or rail cross section the usually rail tracks are used. In flat rolling also the initial plate then you can reduce to a, a smaller thickness and then the same uh, the reduced thickness can further be rolled to uh, uh, further reduced thickness and the width would also increase. And then the same can also be uh, used in subsequent passes to make foils and all that also. So, if you look at this last figure where you have the shape rolling, you can also roll the rectangular uh, cross section billet into a circular cross section that is also a kind of shape rolling. So, the raw material and the final products both in flat and shape rollings are like this which is shown here alright. So, what you find as in general if you look at when you start rolling how do you start. So, in fact after casting the, the, the ingots are being cast right in casting industries. So, those ingots after casting are rolled into one of the three intermediate shapes which is called as blooms ok or billets or slips. So, the ingots are to be first rolled into three intermediate shapes which is called as blooms, billets and slabs alright. The blooms have a square cross section usually 6 inch by 6 inch or may be larger than that and uh, they are rolled into structural shapes. Whereas, the billets have a square cross section around 1.5 inch to 1.5 inch are larger and they are rolled into bars and rods. So, whenever you want to uh, roll uh, 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 bars and rod you should go for what you should start with a billet. Similarly, the slabs have rectangular cross section around 10 inch by 1.5 inch are larger and uh, they are rolled into plates, seats and strips etcetera. So, these are the three very basic or intermediate shapes that is obtained after rolling ingots right. As any other metal forming processes, rolling can be uh, performed either in hot that we call it as a hot rolling or it can be performed in cold and that we call it as a cold rolling process right. Most rolling is carried out by hot rolling because you require a bulk deformation process owing to the large amount of deformation which is required right. Hot rolled uh, metal is uh, generally free of uh, uh, any residual stresses and has isotropic properties. On the other hand uh, it does not have close dimensional tolerances and the surfaces has a characteristic which has got oxides uh, is, is scale etcetera right. So, moreover cold rolled metals are very strong and it does not have uh, the oxide formation and all that. So, that is a positive thing. So, uh, let us see the cold rolling process which is uh, performed at room temperature as you all know. So, at uh, room temperature the rolling increases work width and this is what is called as spreading. When you roll it the width increases and this is what is called as spreading. So, spreading is expected because of the volume constancy in plastic deformation right, volume remains constant and since the material is compressed uh, in the thickness direction both the length and width will increase provided that the 
the material is not constant in the width direction, all right. So, spreading is more pronounced with low width to thickness ratio and uh, low coefficient of friction, since there is a small resistance to flow in the width direction, all right. So, starting with this cold rolling, let us see the, the, the cold rolling of flat, uh, that is flat rolling and the related analysis, all right. Now, uh, let us recall back the previous uh, lectures, where uh, we discuss about the, uh, 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 the true strain and all that, true stress. So, basic uh, equation is starting with, the true stress uh, is strain experienced by the work in rolling uh, is uh, basically based on the stock thickness and uh, uh, stock thickness before and after the rolling, right. So, how do you write the true strain? So, true strain has been nothing but the natural log of uh, T 0 by T f, where T 0 is your initial thickness and uh, that is before rolling of the plate and uh, T f is the final that is which is less than T 0, okay. And you know the average flow stress uh, in flat rolling uh, can be determined by very uh, simple equation which is given here y average that is the f which is equal to capital K the true strain raised to the power n divided by n plus 1, where you know the capital K is the strength ratio, n is your strain hardening exponent and uh, you can refer for this the tensile testing uh, uh, lectures that we discussed earlier and uh, also remember the power law, where the uh, stress was given as capital K and uh, strain raised to the power n. Okay. So, if you recall this one, so this average flow stress in flat rolling can be found out. In this uh, process, a sheet will be rolled. Let us look at some experimental type of things. So, uh, let us have a sheet which will be rolled to say 4 stage or 4 pass, uh, passes. What is a stage? Say, when there is a one set of roller, second set of roller, third set of roller and fourth set of roller and you are asked to reduce the total thickness to a very small. So, in one pass you cannot design uh, 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 reduce the size very drastically, otherwise defect lot of defect would appear. Okay. So, what we do? We can do it in these stages. So, let us think of a sheet which will be reduced, which will be rolled in four stages. So, in each pass the average flow stress can be determined using this formula which is given here. So, for each pass that means the y average, the previous equation if you look at it is the same thing. So, the y average for the ith pass that is the the average flow stress in the ith pass is given by capital K. The true strain of the ith pass raised to the power n plus 1 minus previous pass true strain raised to the power n plus 1 divided by uh, the epsilon i minus epsilon i 1 and multiplied by n plus 1. So, where uh, y average i is the average flow stress in the ith pass, that is the strain after i minus 1 th, that is the before the ith pass would be simply natural log of T 0 by T i minus 1, that is all. The end strain after the ith pass would therefore, be what natural log of T 0 by T i, that is all. So, it is a very simple, very straightforward equation. So, capital K is your strength coefficient and uh, strain hardening exponent is n, all right. So, to calculate the roll force, 
usually very important uh, required to maintain the separation between the two roll. The roll force capital F can be calculated in a very crude manner by this equation, where that means 1.15 multiplied by y average i, i th pass multiplied by l i that is l i is the approximate contact length in the i th pass and uh, multiplied by w i which is the width of the seat in the i th pass all right. So, this equation general equation uh, can be used to calculate the roll force required to maintain the separation between the two rolls all right. So, capital F is your roll force. The torque in rolling then subsequently can be calculated once you have got the roll force. So, this torque can be calculated can be estimated by capital T which is capital T and it is nothing but 0.5 multiplied by capital F multiplied by L, where capital T is your torque uh, in Newton meter or it can be in pound inch. F is your roll force that you have calculated previously and L is capital L is your contact length. So, contact length is the, the part of the the seat work piece which is in contact with the two rollers right. And once you have calculated the, the torque one can very easily calculate the power required to derive the two roll uh, uh, so that the, these rolls are able and they drive it well without any problem. So, the power requirement for driving the two roll can be calculated by capital P and this is what is given as 2 pi multiplied by capital N multiplied by capital F and multiplied by capital L, where capital P is your power which is uh, in joule per second uh, that is what or it may be inch uh, pound per minute. Capital N is your rotation that is the RPM. The, the roll rotation speed and capital F is your roll force and capital L is your contact length all right. So, you can calculate the power and accordingly one can select a proper motor. So, what we get out of the these three equations? One can conclude that the contact length decreases with decreasing the roll radius because it is the if you look at the terms. Secondly, the roll force depends on the contact length and therefore, reducing the roll radius will reduce the roll force all right. The torque and power depends on the roll force and the contact length therefore, and therefore, reducing the roll radius will reduce both the torque and power is it ok. That is very simple out of these equations simple equations and fourthly the conclusion is the power also depends on the rotational speed of the rolls and therefore, reducing the roll rpm will reduce the power. So, keeping these four points one can design the, the rollers, one can design the RPM at which and that is closely related to the production that is the productivity that one wants and accordingly one can select the motor and uh, the type of mill right. So, you can also see out of this that on the entrance side of the slab on the entrance side of uh, there is no slip point all right. The roll is therefore, faster and the seat 
and therefore, the frictional force is in the rolling direction. On the exit side, if you look at of uh, the no roll, uh, no slip point, right? The roll is slower than the seat, and therefore the friction force is opposite to the rolling direction. So these two things, that is the point. There is a point shows that there is a point before the friction is in one direction and after that point the friction becomes in opposite direction. This point is called a neutral point. right? So, the compression force on the rolls multiplied by the frictional coefficient equals the frictional force. All right, It is a simple thing and uh, increasing the frictional coefficient therefore, will shift the neutral point towards the entrance. All right. So, these are very, very important points in rolling. So, in rolling frictional force is very, very important because it is responsible for rolling the seat between the two rolls. Rolling may not be possible, the seat will not be pulled therefore, if the draft angle is large. Okay the maximum draft for the successful rolling one can calculate by this formula, which is uh, d max is the maximum draft for successful rolling is a nu square multiplied by capital R, okay, where nu is the coefficient of friction and R is the roll radius. Okay. So, as one can see from these equation that if the nu is 0, suppose that means friction is 0, then d max is also 0. That means, rolling is not going to take place at all, it is not possible at all. So, that is the uh, use of friction very, very important especially in rolling. In fact, defects in rolling may be either surface defects or structural defects. If you look at, we will discuss more in de uh, on details of the different defects that is found. But the surface defects include uh, usually scales and uh, roll marks. While uh, because in hot rolling, basically where the scales are formed and roll marks are also there. Uh, in uh, structural defects, like uh, uh, the next slide we would show you. Uh, in the structural defects, uh, there could be wavy edge, which is uh, bending of the roll uh, causes the seat to be thinner at the edges, which tends to elongate more. Since the edges are restricted by the material at the center, they tend to wrinkle and uh, form wave like edges. Secondly, the center and the second one that you would show you now, the center and edge cracks are also formed, which is caused by two material uh, ductility and uh, barreling of the edges. Thirdly, uh, alligating uh, defects that results from uh, inhomogeneous deformation of uh, R, which is a defect in the, the original uh, cast ingots itself it happens. So, other defects may include your residual stresses. Uh, in some cases uh, residual stresses are desirable however, but sometimes when it exceeds then the desired limit then it is a problematic. So, you can look these defects uh, which is called as the structural defects in seat rolling. Number one which I said in the direction if you see the wavy edge, second one is the central uh, center cracking, the edge cracking and uh, elevatoring is the one. So, these defects when you roll it is not desired that it goes out of the product in the product. So, you one has to improve the process, one has to look the reasons of defects are if there is a minor defects 
are found then you have to trim the side sometimes or you further roll it. So, uh, one has the purpose is to show you here the what are the different types of rolling. As far as the rolling mills are concerned as I said there are different types of uh, rolling mill configurations uh, are commonly used uh, like uh, the two high rolling mill that consist of two opposing rolls and uh, these rolls may rotate only in one direction that is non reversing type or in two direction which is called as the reversing type. We will show you the figures related. The second one which we call it as the three high rolling mill that allows a series of reductions without the need of changing the rotational direction of the roll. Third the four high rolling mills uh, using small rolls reduces power consumption as you know, uh, but increases the roll deflection. So, in this configuration that is four high rolling mill. Uh, the two small rolls which is called as working rolls are used to reduce the power and uh, another two rolls which is called as the backing rolls are used to provide support to the working rolls all right. And the fourth variety one can uh, consider as the cluster rolling mill which is another configuration that allows a smaller uh, working roles to be used. Uh, there are other uh, variety like uh, the tandem rolling mill where we have series of rolling stands are generally used. So, these various configurations of the rolling mill that I discuss one can see here that is the two high rolling mill, uh, then this is the two high rolling mill reversing then uh, sorry the three high rolling mills uh, and the, the four high rolling mills and the tandem rolling mill and the others. So, the last one that uh, the tandem rolling mill where the series of rolling stands are there that is your uh, all right. So, one can see the direction of the rolls in all that and uh, very important is the last one where uh, let us look at certain exercise kind of things like a lab. So, let us look at the basic rolling parameters and some of the fundamental principles in rolling like how to calculate the roll force required to reduce the thickness of a given aluminum strip. Secondly, let us verify the plane strain assumptions used in the, the rolling analysis if you previously see and uh, identify where the plane strain assumptions are not valid and uh, to calculate the percentage spread in such cases and uh, evaluate the, the strain hardening uh, phenomenon in rolling processes. And uh, let us see to identify some defects involved in the rolling process. So, let us have a, a lab kind of uh, exercise here. So, for this kind uh, what we require, we require some equipments. So, uh, one can go for the scale down model of an individual rolling mill. The rolling mill uh, basically has uh, two rolls as, as I said uh, powered by an electric motor. The distance between the rolls uh, which is uh, the roll gap, we call it as a roll gap can be adjusted by rotating a pair of rotationally calibrated screws at the top of the roll stand and that we call it as the housing right. We will see the figure and uh, to keep the roll gap constant uh, one has to ensure that the two adjusting screws uh, have not uh, have been properly adjusted to the same calibration number. because if you increase the number more it will be disturbed. So, because there is a mark on each roll housing used to align the calibration marks on the adjusting screws ok. So, look at this picture where the scale down uh, 
uh, rolling mill is used in the a simple labs. So, you can now mark the adjusting its screw here and uh, this is what the roll housing stand where the two rolls are uh, coupled and the rollers you can see right. You can look at. So, adjusting screws if you look at these are the marks. So, you have a calibration numbers it is if you look at. So, let us see how would you use it. So, as far as rolling one has to obtain the material data first right. That means, the value of what is the value of k and what is the value of n from uh, either it is given to you whatever material is given in any lab and uh, record it in your <laughs> proper uh, data sheet and then you record the following initial conditions of your uh, sample strip that you are going to roll like what is the thickness you measure the thickness what is the length what is the width and what is the hardness that is HRC Rockwell hardness and uh, what is the average of the three measurements like say because you must take at three places here, here at the in beginning and the in the middle and take the average of all those so average okay. and then you set the roll gap for the first pass right. So, the previously you can see the adjusting is screw to 5 let us have a set to 5 and then you start the rolling. Okay. So, once the rolling has take place, so it is rolling being rolled, so the one has to feed the strip through the mill right and uh, make sure uh, not to feed the strip at an angle please note into the rolls right, because the initially it has to be beaten by the, the rollers and uh, once it is carried out uh, and then you record uh, the, the thickness, length and width and uh, hardness uh, 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 after the first pass has taken place again HRC and the average of the three measurements that is at three different points after the first pass. And uh, then further you reduce the roll gap by one unit per pass and repeat the same steps that is step 3 to 6 for the remaining 4 passes. Because I discuss we, we are going to discuss the 4 pass rolling of. Uh, so, the in the second part let us now estimate the coefficient of friction. So, what we would do uh, uh, with a new sample one can start and uh, record the initial thickness okay, and measure the roll radius. And then uh, in the third step set the roll gap to be 1 mm on the adjusting screw and uh, start the rolling mill. Okay. So, as the fifth process very uh, gentle attempt uh, uh, is made to feed the strip through the mill, but do not force the, the strip into the mill. Hold the strip as uh, level as possible and uh, let the friction between the roll and the strip pulls uh, it in. Okay. So, this must be in the case to get the accurate data uh, regarding the frictional force. Uh, right. So, note the strip well uh, not to be pulled on this first attempt, okay. one has to be careful like this. And uh, last one, one can then calculate the coefficient of friction, then what one can do is open the roll gap uh, by uh, steps on one half unit on the roll set is screw and repeat the step 5 until the mill just pulled in the strip the number on which the roll is set is not important and only the initial and the final thickness of the specimen are 
needed all right so as the seventh step record the final thickness and complete the calculation with the the formulas which was provided in initially right so uh, one can uh, then as the third part one can calculate the traverse strain in rolling so in this section of uh, calculation uh, one will use a, a strip of uh, aluminum that has uh, a lower width to thickness ratio this section therefore that uh, uh, we would see that the fact that the plane strain assumption which we have done in the, those equation in rolling must uh, be used carefully right and only for particular cross section only so how to proceed that means first one has to record the specimen initial width and thickness and then the the roll gap let us put the roll gap as 3 mark mark 3 and the roll the strip and then record the final width of the thickness so uh, one can notice that there is a change in all directions okay so this is what's the uh, the example the the strip which is one can use for uh, this exercise just now i uh, explained uh, the strip having low weight to uh, ratio w by t ratio that is the width to thickness and the another is the the high width to thickness ratio two types of sample has been shown so this is what is the picture that is showing the the seat rolling process so here left side is the plane strain condition which is expected out of and here the spread uh, is expected in this case because the plane strain condition width is more as compared to the but here the spread therefore expect, would be expected out of the smaller w by t ratio work piece all right so this is what the very simple uh, the rolling practices in fact uh, when the cold rolling in hot rolling what is the situation when we perform hot rolling uh, usually uh, uh, the the input workpiece material is kept in furnace uh, and hot rolling temperature you know the hot temperature so that is kept in furnace and uh, uh, once the rolling has to be started it is taken out of the furnace and it is put to the the roller the first pass and then it passes to the second pass in between there is cooling so water use in usual processes water is being spread and uh, accordingly to the the temper temperatures and all that and the rpm and all those things uh, the roll passes from one uh, stand to the another and then it comes out you know the uh, in multiple pass rolling the speed increases because you are you go on reducing the the seat uh, in each pass and it has to be ensured that there is no defect or happens to be there at any stage and in if you look at the usual very industrial scenario in industries how we do initially these uh, the if it is from the plate so what i have seen uh, a plate of uh, 1.5 meter width and around uh, 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 around uh, 15 centimeter or say uh, 6 to 8 inch thick plate uh, it is uh, kept in tunnel furnace for around 10 to 12 hours and then it passes through and uh, say if it is uh, 10 meter plate it will reduce to around 1000 or uh, say uh, 1 kilometer or 2 kilometer length uh, strip maybe 1 meter uh, 1 mm thick 2 mm thick like that so 
the hot rolling is very interesting, but the hot rolling as I said there are more and more controls. So, in usual practice the hot rolling that is performed in industry is very interesting, because uh, the controls of the thickness, the controls of the defects, the controls of the uh, microstructure, the controls of the speed and all these without any defect. So, the, the rolling mills and the monitoring of the rolling mills, because at any stage if the, the roll gap if the stresses are the temperature it comes out of. So, anything may happen, we have seen that the whole roll, whole the rolling strip it goes up around 10 to 20 meter high, if something uh, 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 goes wrong, while the temperature are sometimes if the, the, the water being spread is, is not proper, then also it may happen, it goes out of the and uh, it may create lot of accident also. So, uh, as far as the rolling is concerned, uh, the different very common the steel rolling, the stainless steel rolling, uh, aluminum rolling is very popular as you know the, the strips, the foils, aluminum foils are very popular product in the food industry as well as packaging industries as well as. So, the rolling area especially hot rolling has been very very interesting. So, design as far as the designing of the rolling, uh, designing of the uh, rolling mills equipments is on one side and the process design is, is on the other side. So, process engineers do the processing part, selecting of the proper uh, process conditions for the rolling and the equipment engineers decide the type of equipment, the, the automation label, the control label uh, that must be there for any rolling mill practices. If you look at uh, the very common practices, the so, this lecture what we covered the very basic in the rolling. In subsequent lecture later, uh, we would cover uh, other details, especially the slab method analysis uh, and then how do you calculate for the, the uh, in a much better manner, you can one can also use the upper bound method for calculating the roll powers and all that. The slip line method is also used and uh, analysis as far as the modeling is concerned, that is also very common in, in industries. The commercially good products is required of good quality. So, if these are not achieved, if these are not given and this purely depends on the type of practices, rolling practices followed as far as the process is concerned, as far as the quality is concerned, as far as the controls at various stages of the rolling is concerned. So, uh, we would close this lecture here and uh, hopefully, uh, we, would, we would again meet in the next lecture. Uh, and uh, I thank you all uh, for keeping patience and uh, also expect your feedback and suggestion of this web based lecturing, so that uh, what else we can add. We can add, uh, okay, let us see this video of the rolling, small rolling. You can see the two rollers, right and you can see that this how the seat is in, uh, inserted here and uh, you see that it is a reversing one, one can the hot plate going from one side and then again to the second side and this is what the industry uh, varies, uh, but it is a locally managed uh, rolling 
and this uh, I thought to give you as a feel of rolling. Okay. So, thank you once again for keeping patience.